Hello everyone, TJB Chris here, and this is my TRS-80 Model 16. You've seen it before, and you remember its friend. This is my TRS-80 Model 12, with uh, no card cage, except I did add the Hansa 3-slot adapter. And this is its new friend. This is a TRS-80 Model 16B that, um, well, I guess I can't help myself. These big tandies are just too alluring. But anyway, this was available from a local seller. Uh, relatively local, It'd drive a couple hours, nothing too big. And he was offering this up. It's a uh, Model 16B, catalog number 266004. So that's the one disc version, but it does have some extras in it, so we'll get to those. And it does have, he threw in a Model 12 keyboard, um, which is the same keyboard as the 16B, just the nameplate varies. Um, but this keyboard is better than the keyboard that comes with my Model 12 in a very important way. You'll notice that in the Model 12, my original Model 12 keyboard, these keys have these raised center tips. That makes hitting enter and shift and hold and all these keys hard. Um, it's really kind of stupid. And this keyboard here actually has wide enter and shift keys. So this is going to be much easier to type on. So I've already done a little bit on this machine. I figured you guys didn't need another time lapse of me scrubbing with magic eraser and otherwise cleaning this thing. So I've done a cleanup job on the outside of the case of the 16B itself and most of the keyboard and gone lightly over the keys, but the keyboard will have to come apart and I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to replace the capacitive foam pads that are inside, but we will use my Model 12 to test that out. Um, so I've done a lot of the, the outside cleanup. I've also taken it apart and as you can see in the images that are now flashing before your eyes, I have cleaned out some of the inside. There really wasn't anything too crazy in there, just the usual dust and stuff, but I haven't taken out any of the any of the chassis or anything like that to clean under it yet. But I have done some basic cleaning, just kind of gone through and vacuumed out the parts that aren't near um, you know, ESD sensitive components, and I've also kind of wiped and blown out with compressed air different parts of this thing and wiped them out. So the machine is now cleaner. Let's take a look at the machine a little more closely. Um, again, this is a one disk, um, no hard drive unit, but the seller did throw in the Type 4 interface card so I can use a FRED 4.8. This machine also has the turbo fan mod, as it's often called. Uh, Model 12s and 16Bs tend to overheat when they have a card cage in them, especially with full cards. So this one has the 120 volt fan on the back of it that basically just forces a whole bunch of air in there and keeps things cooler than the one fan that was in there. And on the top of the Model 12, that fan's right about here and just pulls air straight up. And it's just not enough. Uh, again, this is uh, 26004. And we can see I have the multi-terminal kit in there, so I'll show you that board. That was one of the bonuses. Um, this thing came with the full complement of cards and has not been powered on or tested yet. Like I said, I've got to, I've got to do some looking over this before I do that. Let's take a look at the cards. Okay, so here we have the 68,000. This is the short board, not the dog-eared one. 6 megahertz 68,000 board. This one is upgradable to 8 megahertz with a PAL upgrade and a couple of other changes, so maybe we'll do that in a future video. Um, the seller did throw in two 256K memory boards to match it, so I'll have a 512K system. We'll have to do some condition checks on these, make sure I don't have any bent um, test po tips or anything else like that, and that the switches are all set up right. And up here on the RLX monitor, we have the Type 4 card with the extra 16K of RAM. This is for interfacing the hard disk. And we'll just have to check and make sure the dumpers are set correctly on this, particularly this one, which will determine which bank of memory that 16, 16K of RAM will occupy. And then finally, we have the video card and the three port serial board, the multi terminal board. That's a nice little bonus. Um, didn't know that was going to be part of the package. So very excited to get that, and that will make playing with Xenix uh, much more fun. And actually, I have some ideas already if I get this machine going. So um, this is, you know, the typical 16 video board and the multi-terminal board, which I'd never actually seen in person before. So as you can tell, I put the machine together here just kind of for show purposes, but I've been poking around in it already. I will be doing a restoration series on this machine, so while you didn't have to watch me scrub and clean it, I do plan to highlight various portions along the way. My immediate plans with this are to get the components checked out inside, I haven't looked at the power supply yet or the main board, clean them if necessary, and then make sure that we don't have any 
leaky caps or the broken reefer caps or anything else like that. Try to avoid some smoke. And if all checks out, I'll throw the video card into the card cage and we'll try and power it up and see if we get an insert diskette prompt. But I can't do that yet. So this machine has not seen power yet here and uh, won't for a little while. And I have a couple of other components sitting down here. Of course, I've got my toothbrush for cleaning. And I have the soundboard already out, and these are the card cage brackets and things like that. So, welcome to the newest collection member. I really can't help myself. Uh, one other thing on the keyboard. I may try to retrobrite this. This is my first real retrobrite project sometime, but that's optional. Um, the machine itself I won't touch. It's a little yellowed, but it's not it's not too bad. Um, the keyboard's really got quite a yellow going on. So I might try that. I figure the keyboard might be a safe thing without the keys. I'll just do the, the outer bezel. Um, so I have not cleaned the inner parts of the keyboard yet. I did clean the outer shell on the bottom and it's, that's now cleaned up. But I will have to take all the keys out and like I said, refoam them anyway. So this is going to be a whole project on a, unto itself. All right, let's get to it. So here's the view of the 16B case removed and I vacuumed it out a bit as you've seen and stayed away from the edges just kind of wiped these paper towels and things but got it all brushed out I also used um, some brushes you know, brushes like this in the uh, you know the areas up around the disk drives and around the edges but not on the circuitry because these brushes aren't ESD safe so my first thing here is I want to take a look at the power supply. I think that's going to be the most important thing. And if I get the power supply chassis or off the chassis, I can look at the motherboard underneath. I've seen some of it from the back, but that's really where I want to get. So what we're going to do now is actually this is the uh, back of the turbo fan mod. And you can see the hard drive interface cable going out. I'm going to disconnect that. Either one come off. Okay, that one came off. So let's do this. Let's leave it like that. All right, I couldn't get this one to come off. I don't really want to force it or bend this or anything, so off it goes. Okay, I'm going to try and leave the fan on here. It's connected down here, and all I really need to be able to do is roll this out to the front. Push this back a bit. Okay, so looking at the power supply, first things first. Okay. A little dusty, not too bad. Um, things I'm noticing, let's get the camera here. Okay, in the reef cap department, I can see some definite cracks on this point one microfarad cap and this point two two one looks like it also might have some cracks so that is probably going to be smoke um, the point all ones in the corner look okay but I have I have point ones and point zero ones I have to see if I can find a point two two um, but that's definitely going to have to be replaced um, it may power up once or twice but then uh, I'm likely to get some magic smoke so otherwise the power supply is you know, a little dirty, but not looking too bad. I think uh, I need to get some ESD brushes in here. I don't have any, so once I get those, I'll clean it out. But I'm going to take a closer look at it, and we'll see if there's anything concerning about it. To take that closer look, we're actually just going to remove the power supply from the unit, and that way we have everything we need. <laughs> There we are, that's the power supply removed. Um, I left these screws on here as best I could. I don't know if I'm going to get away with that because I need the washers under them, but to move the, remove the shroud here, um, the main thing I was trying to avoid and may not be able to was there is the terminal block on here and attaching it is going to be difficult with the power supply in place with the components there. So I was hoping to avoid removing the terminal block, but we'll see what happens. So. I may end up have to, having to anyway. I don't want to disconnect the terminal block. I'm, uh, it's not all that difficult, but I just really don't want to have to futz with this. So 
Anyway, we have a fair amount of dirt in here. So here's the main logic board with the power supply removed, at least the back side of it. You can see it's a little dusty and stuff, but otherwise pretty good shape. We have the uh, power and reset switch here, the power light and reset switch. We've got some jumpers to check. Um, but otherwise, I think we're in pretty good shape. I mean, really, other than being a little dusty and needing a cleaning, it looks to be in pretty good shape. So what we're going to do now is focus on the power supply. And like I said, this uh, 0.22 microfarad reef cap here looks cracked, so I'm going to have to find a replacement. The 0.1 is, and on this side I have a 0.01 that looks to be in decent shape, but I have a spare, so I might do that. I'm not going to recap the entire power supply unless it's absolutely necessary. I try not to do that unless there's problems with the electrolytics or it doesn't seem to work right. So um, I feel like I'm just inviting unnecessary trouble, but the reefer caps will smoke, so we'll just take care of those. And here are the caps I have. Uh, what I have on hand for the 0.1 and 0.01 microfarad safety caps. I found the other ones and they're on order. Should be here in a couple of days. So until they get here, I think this is a good point to wrap this part. The machine's going to kind of stay in the state. So thanks for watching part one, my intro and partial disassembly of the Model 16B. Be sure to join me for part two where we'll test out the keyboard here on the Model 12. And we might even start to take that apart, clean the keys, and start to refurbish the keyboard. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.